Hello. How are you guys doing today? I'm just out here to talk about something super, super deep. What's new? Um, but also, I'm on my walk. So I'll give you a little view of that. Yeah, here we are at the river. I'm halfway through my walk. And what a couple of days it has been. So let's get into it. So, you know, I always tell people like to watch what you're asking for. So for example, you know, when people say, well, I need to practice patience or I need patience. I always say, watch what you're asking for, because if you ask for that, you're going to get a million opportunities that will call upon you needing patience. And that could be pretty irritating. Unless you want that, then great. But be careful what you ask for, because you're going to have to be that. You're going to have to demonstrate, in this case, like patience. So I have known that for years. So why this didn't occur to me until it was told to me the other night is beyond me. I was really feeling good in my desires, like thinking about them and feeling all grateful and feeling, you know, like just it was bl a blissful moment of feeling my desires. And then I heard a message. If you want things easy, you've got to be, you have to be, be at ease and approach things like they're easy. And I was like, whoa, wait, what? Hold the donkey. What, what was that? Because I asked for many years, you know, that this comes to me with ease or I live this sort of life with ease or getting the, being this is easy. Like I use ease and easy a lot. And you're just telling me now after all of this time, but why wouldn't it have occurred to me? Because I already knew that about patience and all those other things, but somehow it evaded me that, Cindy, you know, you're wondering why it's hard or you're wondering why things have to be like, ugh, challenging. Well, if you want it ease and you want it easy, you got to be at ease and you got to be easy. Common sense, right? So where in your life are you asking for something that you need to be that also? Like, we all have to do this. So for me, it was this. But what is it for you? And how can you approach it, your life, your daily life, and everything you do with whatever that is for you? So for me, it was like I've been on top of myself. Like, okay, you know, first of all, do I feel at ease? And, you know, I was... I was tapping into my energy and feeling all this tenseness in my in my energy and my body and going well number one energetically not feeling too ease there or easy I need to clear this tenseness and I'll tell you I've done way over probably 15,000 healings in my life on people and myself and one thing, common thing that comes up in their sessions is tenseness. There's always tenseness somewhere. Not always, but pretty much there's some tenseness somewhere. And sometimes there's a lot of tenseness everywhere. And when you're looking at tenseness in your energy, that is going to affect your emotional state. It's going to affect your mental state. It's going to affect your physical state eventually, if it hasn't already. It could make you tired. 
It can make you sick. It can make you have disease. It can make you have back pains, leg pains, knee pains, any kind of pain. Relationship issues. It, it, it'll affect everything. Tenseness. Because when you're tense, you're constricting your energy, right? It's almost like you're waiting for something, like you're guarding against something coming at you. And um, so you, you really need to release those, those tense energies. And so I was doing that because I want to think of things with a sense of ease. I want to think of things as being easy, coming easy, everything's easy. And you know what? It's not that hard. The first step is knowing what you need to be doing. The second step is putting it into practice and just being on top of yourself and make making sure you're doing it. So I was telling my friend Homer, I'm going to put easy and ease on post-it notes all over the place. So I just have that reminder. So like when, you know, I wake up and I think about the things I have to do. It's just not like, oh, I got to like do this and do that. It's like, oh, it's easy. I just got to do that and this. Easy. It'll get done. Okay. It's just changing the way that you respond to things, think of things, and the energy that you're putting out. But a big part is clearing that tenseness that I'm talking about. And, you know, it may not just be any tenseness that's easy to release out of your space. I was, like, releasing things, and then I realized, like, later that night, when I was thinking about, like, why didn't, why wasn't I told like, they're talking to me all the time, my higher guidance, and uh, why didn't they just tell me this about this ease and easy thing before? So I was kind of pissed off, actually. I was like, you know, why do you have to, like, wait all these years? Like, you could have told me before, like, this is BS. So I wasn't happy about that. But then I started, I'm going to flip you around for a second so you can see this so pretty out here this is my usual walk if I'm not at the beach so so anyway all of a sudden I was like irritated but then all of a sudden I was feeling like that tenseness, like a solid pit deep in my third chakra, which is the area of your abdomen, which is your personal power and your balance in your life. And I was like, what is that? And I saw a vision of when I was in third grade, I was probably eight or nine, and I was at school and our teacher had taken us across the street to a park. And we were like practicing for track and field or some, whatever, something. And, um, you know, we had been running around and we were about to leave. And I went to go get a drink of water from the water fountain. And when I was going to the water fountain, there was this little, this group of kids, not from the school, just from the neighborhood. And it was actually a rough neighborhood. And, but that didn't. I don't know. I wasn't scared back then. Boy, I was, I was, I'm amazed at what I was doing at that age in that neighborhood. Crazy. Anyway, it wasn't my neighborhood. That's just where I went to school. And, um, I was going by this group of kids. There was a whole group. And then there was one boy that was older. He was much taller than the other kids. And he was making them laugh. And I don't know. I just felt like the energy felt, you know, it felt happy. And I was like walking behind them and I looked over, I was looking at them because he was like making them laugh and I was smiling too. Like, you know, I don't know. I was in the groove of happy. I don't even know what he was talking about. He was joking around. And he looked over at me and he said, what are you smiling at? And he walks over and punches me right in the gut. Like, a third grade little girl, okay? He was probably, like, I just remember him being so much taller. He was probably in maybe sixth grade or seventh grade. I don't know. And he sucker punches me right in the stomach. 
freaked me out. Totally freaked me out. And um, I was shocked, first of all. I didn't even know, like, I would have never imagined that. And then I went back over to my class, my teacher, and I told her, and she proceeds to yell at me and tell me, why did you go over there? What were you doing over there? Like, totally, like, bitching me out. So now I'm even more, like, getting traumatized because like I'm not feeling safe because that guy did that and I'm not feeling safe because here's my teacher like totally you know chastising me in front of everybody too so imagine what that did for me and um, we got in line and we left and walking back to the school I just remember being so freaked out I was totally freaked out and embarrassed. Embarrassed, too. Embarrassed. I'm freaked out about the guy and scared and embarrassed because my and unsafe because my teacher did that. So going back to this thing I was feeling in my gut, I realized it was related to that. And I was like, holy crap. That kid literally took my personal power like he sucker punched me and he took my personal power and probably you know in a in a way that is a spell that is also a curse and it and there could have been many reasons for why that happened could been the adversary trying to get me when i was young with my personal power because i was seeing spirits i was you know i was very psychic i didn't realize it but maybe trying to take some of that, or it could have been karmic related, where some I was paying debt to something, or starting a debt with something. I mean, there could be a million reasons. But what I do know was I realized it was 50, 52 years that I that he had taken a big part of my personal power right in the center of my gut, and I realized also. In my 30s and 40s, that was the area that I used to work on a lot. I always, like, I could feel, like, in my relationships or in my worries or fears, like, it would go right to my gut. And I would always be putting protection up there because I would feel it hitting me right in the gut all the time. And I knew that. So I was always working on that. And now I know why. (laughs) I didn't realize that until two nights ago, but wow. So that started a lot. And so then I was pissed because I thought, what a, what an a-hole that kid was. Like I was a little third grader. Give me a break, a little girl. And you're going to do that. Like, what a, what a weirdo, but he could have had some really nasty energies working through him because who would do that? You know? Um, so that led to a whole other string of things that were coming up related to my personal power. So every time these things would come up, it was like connecting the dots. So this is what I do with my clients all the time. Um, but it's usually in a session and it's only, you know, an hour long, 45 minutes. And, um, I'm finding these tense areas and seeing where it's connecting, what's getting in the way, how it's affecting you, what is go- how, how you could better it, what you need to do to, you know, help yourself to sustain not having that once we release it. And so that's something that I do in my healings all the time. But because it's me and I can see these things, you know, once they start flashing in, they start connecting dots to other things. And it was like two days of this that I would start seeing other things that were related and other things that I needed to release. And pretty soon it turned into this whole karmic, curse, spell, ill intention kind of release where, you know, all of these things could be all of these different things. And I was, you know, really seeing different people in my life, different situations that 
we're all, you know, triggered into being from this one thing that happened 52 freaking years ago. Imagine. That's just insane. Another thing is, remember your life and your dreams, all the things that happen to you, your interactions, they're always talking to you. They're always telling you things. You just got to be aware. So I also had this dream last, not last night, the night before, uh, one of my sisters and she, we had to go somewhere, but she didn't tell me that we were going and I wasn't ready. And I just remember like I was freaking out in the car going, why didn't you tell me like I'm dressed, like I'm not dressed right. I, I'm dressed like mom. It's so funny that I said that. I'm just like mom. I was wearing a t-shirt, jeans, and tennis shoes. But I was like, look at these shoes. And she was like, oh yeah, like those shoes. Like, yeah, you don't look good. And she was just so happy that she looked good. And it was like she did it on purpose and it, to embarrass me and to make herself look good. But in all actuality, it would make her look bad too because we were going as a pair and you know together to do this it was like a i don't know if it was like a job or an audition or some kind of thing so anyway it was this whole dream and i just couldn't believe that she did that and she was just being so obviously like like very happy with herself and um but throughout the dream i just kept trying you know i did the best with what i could you know i still showed up i still tried to be on it the best I could, whatever. And then I woke up and I was like, whoa, that was weird. So do I have some shit with her? Like, what, what is this stuff? So I started working on with her, with my relationship with her. But then what it brought to my attention was what happened in my, with a friend, friend, ex-friend, um, that actually did that to me once, seven years ago. We were going on a trip and she told me, yeah, she's like, she, she acted like she had been to this place and which was weird in itself. And I didn't find out until we were actually there that she had never been there. And, but she was telling me like what I could wear, what I should wear and all this stuff. So I brought, you know, I listened to her and when I got there it was totally not what I should be wearing. It wasn't to the point of complete inappropriateness, but it definitely wasn't appropriate. And she was really like, she did a lot of things that were very, like she was trying to embarrass me, but she felt good about that. It was really weird, really weird. And so it, you know, that triggered that memory about her. So I was like, shit, that pitch, t oops. <laughs> that person put a, a spell on me. Like I realized that like, she put a spell on me or a curse. And so I was like, just, it was so much release with this karmic curses, spells, ill, inten Ill intentions. Like I was just seeing pe all kinds of scenarios for two days and it was kicking my ass. I felt so like, ugh, for two days, like going through that, just so gutted and so my, my, the energy around me was just twisting and turning. And I was, it was, I was just like, oh my gosh, my poor clients, what they go through. Because when I tell my clients what's going on with, with them, I'm detached. Like I'm not feeling any, I mean, I might feel what they feel, but it's not my stuff. So, you know, it's not that a big a deal for me, but then, you know, they're going through a lot because it is their stuff. And, you know, those sessions are intense because it's not child's play. It's like, you want to move through your crap. You want to get what you want. You, you want to get this stuff that's hindering you out of your life, I'll dig it out for you and I'll dig deep. I even saw a curse from my mother's side, my grandmother's side of the family that I had to clear. 
what in the heck? And then I saw people that were brought into our family line due to that curse that was hindering us. And I realized that the fight that I do have, and I don't consider it a fight, but the strength that I do have that has carried me and, and kept me able to do what I do and do what I want to the best of my ability. You know, besides that, my rising sign is Aries. It's very Aries. Is my grandmother. And in my book, Dead People in My Life, I talk about my grandmother because she's a huge influence on me. And whether she was alive or deceased, she was, she's always there. She's always telling me, keep going, persist. Don't, you know, she's like, forget about them. Just, you know, go. She's always pushing me. And it's in her, I'm getting chills. It's in her, like that she did that. She came from the Philippines in, I think, 1924. And she was one of the first Filipino families in the um, California Bay Area. She was one of the first female welders that welded on military ships in Vallejo, California. Like she's a badass. What woman in 1924 is working welding on military ships? And um, she, you know, didn't know English. She learned by reading newspapers. And no matter what, she always did whatever she could to make money. Like she would, there's a place called the Cow Palace in San Francisco where there used to be a lot of workers. She would go there with lunches and sell lunches. Like she would do anything to be enterprising. And eventually she started buying and selling real estate. She did really well, like freaking amazing woman. But all the while had someone in her life that I was shown was placed there due to um, this curse. And, you know, that affected our family because we're all, we're all in it together. And um, so I'm just going to sit down over here. I think I walked four miles. So, yeah, it was like clearing that stuff. And then also it was brought to, hold on, to my attention that if I cleared that family karma, that family curse that and spells, do it for myself and whatever family wants to be part of that will. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to force any of your family to want to clear that. Maybe it's still serving them. But I can't imagine why anybody would want it, but maybe it's still serving them. Um, so anyway, yeah, that came through. So it means that there's there's someone somewhere that doesn't want that. Anyway, so it's been like tossed salad the last few days. And, you know, I know I'm still going through it, but I'm feeling better today than I was the last couple of days. It was just like, you know, a snow globe just being shaken and shaken and being dizzy by so many of these aspects that were coming in that were affecting my life. I mean, from eight years old, like till now, how that one thing initiated all of these other issues to mess with me, to hinder me, to block me. From what? From what was I talking about in the beginning? From ease and from things being easy. This all has to do with being blocked from things being e coming with ease, with life being at ease, and things coming easy. So that was my whole connecting the dots of what was that tense energy that I started to clear in regards to this ease and easy message that I got that I spoke about in the beginning of this recording. Um, and how all of, how I've been affected holding tenseness in my body all these years from somebody sucker punching me when I was eight. 
Talk about crazy. Whoa. That's why I love light activation because it goes to places you would never expect. And it's the stuff you don't know that you need to know. The stuff you do know, you know, and you can deal with that. But if you don't know something, it's going to keep messing with you. How are you going to ever get through it if you don't clear the stuff that you don't know? And that's what I'm here for in the sessions that I do is finding these things. And as you know, I, like I said, I've done well over 15,000 healings, well over 15,000 healings for other people and myself. Okay. I live this every day. I don't have a lot of distractions in my life. So when I say distractions, it's not meant to have a negative connotation, but it's something to be aware of. What could be distractions in your life? Having, always being busy, having things to do, having to go somewhere, going to, you know, having a dog, having grandchildren, dealing with kids, um, you know, whatever, you know, watching TV, whatever takes your mind off of you can be a distraction. Now, it's not to say that you should never do those things. It's a balance. Yeah, you should do, you should enjoy the things you love doing, but you should also save a regular time to be checking with yourself. And especially now, this time of our lives where a lot of people are like, what's next? What should I really be doing? Like, you're doing what you're doing, but it's um, it's a direct uh, relation or reflection of what's going on in life. Like with with what's been we, what our planet has been dealing with in, for the last two years, it has affected everyone. And and I see so many people trying to reach back to 2019 and continue their life from there when. Sorry, we're almost two years beyond 2019. That is not where you should be continuing on from. Where should you be continuing on from? You should be returning, continuing on from now. Not 2020, not even 2021. Now. Like, and how do you do that your best? Like, what is it that you, who are you? Who are you? Who the F are you? Do you even know? Because if you're not even stopping to like tap in and, and, and be open to seeing these things that the universe shows me, yes. And yes, okay, I might have a little advantage where, you know, I'm, I do this work all the time. So my mind and my, my abilities are trained to connect dots and follow paths and, and find the ins and outs. Yes, it's my work. And whatever you do a lot, you're going to be good at. So yes, it's easy for me to do this, but life is always showing you too. It's showing you in your relationships. It's showing you in what you find hard getting in your life. It's showing you in what you're not able to manifest in your life. It's showing you in your emotions and how you feel. It's showing you in how, what tenses you up and how relaxed you actually are every day. Like that was the, the kind of trigger that got me when I, got that message about the ease and easy when I said, okay, well, first of all, is my energy feeling ease and easy? Because that's the first thing you need to check. And I saw that tense energy. I was like, well, tense is not ease. So I need to work on releasing that tenseness. And because I started that, that's what started the whole dot connecting and the whole thing coming over two days so far. Um, but if you don't stop to do that, you just keep, well, let me just go do my life. Let me, you know, well, now I'll have breakfast and now I'll like walk the dog and then, you know, I'm going to meet my friend or um, I'm going to watch TV or I'm going to go to work or um, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm whatever you're doing and you're not doing like reflecting on what is who you are and what, what's really going on, how you feel, how you think how you're, if you're being judgmental or, you know, I notice how I, how I am when I see people or think about people, like, 
boy, you're being judgmental. Like, why, why is that person bug you so much? Why, how are you, every time something good happens with that person, why does that trigger you so much? Like, what, what is that? Like asking yourself, why do you do that? Like, cause that's life telling you what you're, what's going on with you. And if you're not taking time to do that, then you're not taking time to know who you are. You're not taking time to deep, dig deeper and excavate these things that are in the way of more of your life of more of is fulfilling and i'll tell you i was thinking about this today when i was thinking about you know what i was going to say there's so many people that will just be like no well this is my life this is my life i like it i go to work i go home like there might be things that irritate everybody right uh, i go to coffee with my girlfriends i go see my uh, grandkids like i you know visit that grandkids and i'll visit that grandkid then we'll visit the grandkids together and then we'll do everything like but they're just focusing on outside of them keeping themselves so busy and preoccupied with all that stuff and they might be fine with that and you know and i have a plan you know a five-year plan i'll retire in five years and then i'm gonna sell my house and then i'll do this and people might be completely fine with that and there's nothing wrong with that as not, I won't even say as long, because you are who you are. You're going to be who you are. You're going to live your life as full and as fulfilled as you want to live it. But some people will just do it in, you know, more just robotic ways, the way that they think that society set up for them. Some people want more meaning in their life. I'm one of those people. Like, I love meaning. I love meaningful things. I love meaningful experiences. I love connection. I love engaging with people that like to be in a depth of connection and and soul live from their soul. And because your soul's always whispering to you and telling you what hey, this would be so good. Hey, sh- this would be so awesome. Like you'd get so much from this. It would open you up so much more because the more that you can touch into that, the more your heart opens, the more you can love, the more you can see the, the better in, in life, in people, in your situation, the, the more you're going to expand into your existence, which I talked about in a, a video, a couple of videos ago about expanding your existence and really living being present, first of all, being present and taking up space. And the more you can expand, the more availability to your fulfillment and your truth and and what's real for you, you can touch. But if you stay in a, okay, I'm rigid. I'm gonna go to work. I'm gonna you know have dinner. I'm gonna see the grandkids. I'm gonna walk the dog. I'm going to do this. The more you do that, that's very regimented and that's okay too. It's good to have, for me, I I also do better when I do like, um, I have a schedule, not a schedule because I do not have a schedule. What do we call it? A, um, not even a plan. Like I'm really bad at schedule. (laughs) I'm bad at being regimented. I am not that person. I am regimented when it comes to my clients. Like if I have something on my schedule, that is happening. But everything else, it's questionable if that's happening. <laughs> Unless it absolutely needs to happen. I need I could be better at that. But to have like a a little bit of of you know, I do have a regular uh what's the word? Not ritual, but like, you know, I do have, you know, the time that I walk and then I have my oatmeal. Like those are set usually set things unless there's something that's, you know, a doctor's appointment or something. But um, yeah, I'm not a regimented person at all. Probably could, it probably could help if I was a little bit more, but see, that's just not me living for my soul. That to me is constricting. That to me would bring a lot, feels very pressured. I, I can't live by hour by hour, like what I plan to do, like I, because a lot of times if I plan something, but I, my, I'm not all in it, I'm forcing myself to do it, it's not going to be my best. And I'm not going to feel happy doing it. It's not going to feel 
easy or at ease either. Like I just really live from how am I feeling? What can I do from how I'm feeling today? What is best for me to work on today? What would be the thing for me to focus on today? And I actually think that's a good way to approach things because then you're in the vibe of what you're doing and it's always going to be better when you're in the vibe of what you need to be doing. But yeah, I mean, if you're not taking time to really ask yourself and dig into, you know, what feeds my soul? I mean, you'll live, you'll have a life and, you know, it might be good enough for you. And there's plenty, you know, I remember my art class I used to go to like two years ago when I would go do things like we did two years ago. And this lady, you know, we were talking about like, um, you know, and she was asking me like, oh, what do you do? She knew that I took people on spiritual journeys and stuff. And I said, yeah, I help people to, you know, understand themselves so they could, you know, live life even better, like to their full. She goes, oh, I'm fine just the way I am. I don't need anything else. She's like, I'm fine. I'm fine exactly how I am. I don't need to change. I don't want to change. She was straight up like, Psh. And I just like kind of laughed like, wow, like I can't even imagine that. I can't even imagine saying, okay, I'm done. This is how I'm going to be. Like, that's just not even me. That's, I, I can't even imagine that. Like, what's the point? But, you know, I shouldn't say that because there's actually 80% of people probably are like that. They're just on autopilot. They're just here to do life on autopilot. They hear what society tells you you should do, and so they do that. And if that's good enough, that's great. You know what? might be easier to be like that <laughs> because I have a lot of things. I do not have distract a lot of distractions. I really don't. So I'm always like, that's in it's intense to be me. <laughs> But that's who I am. I was thinking about that today. Like, it's intense to be me because I'm always, like, in this. Like, what I'm telling you, this is me, like, all the time. In thinking and churning and insights. And that's why I have to get out and walk because I just need to, like, you know, take it, get out into some space, into some energy. But it's not easy to always be like that because... Like, I don't have a dog. I don't have things I, I'm, I don't have distractions. I don't have a lot of distractions. I don't even watch TV. Like, it's, you know, probably could give myself a break, but it's not what I do. It's not who I am. I, a lot of times, sit in my living room and have tea and, and it's going and it's happening. Wow. Anyway, been on here a long time. I have no idea how long, but it seems like long. Anyway, that's what's been going on. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed listening. Let's see. I'll give you another view where I am. So I walked all the way almost to that bridge was where I was talking when I Sometimes we get dolphins out here and manatee, lots of birds and alligators. So it's nice. The weather's super nice. It's been chilly. When I say chilly in the mornings, like 55. Brr, are you kidding me? I can't even get out of bed like that. That is way too cold. And then um, it was when I left the house, it was about 60, I think. But it feels warmer now, but that might have been because I walked four miles. Um, and I will walk 100 miles. <laughs> No. Anyway, it feels good. But let's see. The time at the moment is 1.41 and I'm going to go home and make my decaf coffee and make some oatmeal. And um, it's been fun talking to you. And I've been trying to come on more because 
I don't know. I feel like that's what I need to do. That, that was a, a decision that I made recently was like, okay, if you don't want to do that, what will you do? And so this is what I'm doing for now. So you guys have a great day. Lots of love. Peace. Um, we're going to Sedona, I think in May and Egypt in October next year. So if you guys want to come and have an amazing experience with me, get a hold of me. There's a few spaces left on uh, both of those things. So, lots all right. Thanks, everybody. Lots of love. Peace out.